Hello. First of all, welcome to this moment. Welcome to here and now. Please take a second to recognize your surroundings, your physical environment, and your mental and emotional environment, the inner and the outer. Now, do me, and more importantly, yourself a favor, and accept that these are your current circumstances. And this is your and mine form of relation. This is the form in which we are currently communicating. Now that I've got some of your directed attention, I would simply like to take this opportunity to share some thoughts and feelings with you about some thoughts and feelings I've had of what this whole perceived experience of consciousness within the universe is. <laughs> now, I know these words may sound like seriously heavy and even frightening to some of you, but no need to fear. All that is required of you is but to listen. I'm not even asking you to believe anything I'm about to tell you. I could never do that. That's not my place. You are free to believe anything you wish. I am only asking you to hear it. So, I'm going to talk about um, the topic of symbolism now. Everything is a symbol, a metaphor. Everything symbolizes something, no matter how small or seemingly insignificant. You could say everything physical is a metaphor or a symbol for an idea or concept behind it. Symbols are very tricky things though, especially when you try to talk about them with words. Because words are limited in expressing certain experiences. You can use words to describe symbols but you can always only attack it from one angle at a time, from one point of view, one perspective at a time. Because really, a symbol and its meaning to each of us is much more a sort of a visceral experience. The meaning of a symbol is more understood through feeling and instinct and intuition rather than sentence structure. This is why I knew when presenting this information, <clears throat> I would have to at least do it in video form to give you more of a sense, more of an experience to feel, rather than just some words to think about. Zen masters would hit you with a stick in order to give you an experience to perceive, to shock you into consciousness of awareness of your own perception of the qualities of the experience. Experience always trumps words themselves, because experience needs no translation. There is no abstraction involved. Experience is immediate. Nonetheless, we live in a world utterly filled to the brim with verbal and written communication. But still, words are symbols. They are a visual or auditory experience that have a sort of transcendent meaning behind them when you have the capabilities to understand a specific language. But really, language is also much more than that. There is language in fashion, in action. There is language in a gesture, in a nuance. Everything is a sign. Everything is significant. Now, I know a lot of people are getting more into astrology these days, which I think is great, and I'm totally into that, um, because it's a study of symbols and how they relate to one another and the qualities or aspects of those relationships. The house system in astrology even goes as far as to indicate the general spheres of activity these relationships take place in. Now. What I want to show you 
right now is uh, this symbol. This one. In astrology, this is the symbol for the Earth. But again, when dealing with symbols, there's always much more than meets the eye. Now, let's break this symbol down a little further. For my purposes, I will say it is composed primarily of four elements. There's a circle, a horizontal line, a vertical line, and the combination of these two makes a cross. Okay? Now, let's look at each of these elements individually. Generally, I know in symbolism that a horizontal line will represent the physical world, the material and the mundane. In a perpendicular relationship, the vertical line will represent the non-physical world and the spiritual and the numinous. When you add them together, you get a cross. A uh, cross itself is a symbol for addition. Um, the important feature of the cross, though, is that it includes this very special point where the two lines meet. In symbolical terms, when talking about the place where the physical and spiritual meet, you are talking about the cross of consciousness, and you are also talking about manifestation. Add a spirit to a physical body, and you get a manifested, conscious, sentient being. You or me. Now, take a moment to sort of think about the implications of this meeting point of consciousness and manifestation. And how the state of the world seems to be dealing with this issue. Right now the world <laughs> seems split in two. You have the polar opposites of science and religion. Science generally dealing exclusively with the physical world, and religion or theology generally dealing with the spiritual. It seems that these two different perspectives and bodies of thought are irreconcilable, that they may never find a common ground with one another. Yet this symbol of addition, this ancient symbol for the cross of consciousness and manifestation, suggest to us that there is in fact a point where these two perspectives meet. And I believe there is such a place where we find a common ground for them both to stand on. I believe this place lies at the point where the mind communes with the soul. It is the place of the conception of, con of concepts the birthplace of ideas, notions, intuitions. It is the essence of spirit. It is the qualities of the perception of experience. <laughs> now, what I mean to say more plainly is that the fundamental building block for all of existence is the notion of a concept. But see, the thing is that what I'm really trying to say actually cannot satisfactorily be put into words, which might explain why you might not exactly understand my meaning yet. But like I said, the understanding of symbols is more of a visceral experience, perceived through instinct and intuition. So this is where I will direct your attention to look for your own understanding. There is another way of attempting to explain this relation, though, and that is starting from the perspective of quantum physics. Scientists now see that atoms themselves are primarily made of empty space, like vast amounts of it. <laughs> I believe what they aren't yet perceiving, though, is that atoms aren't empty as we think of the idea of empty but rather they are full of the quality of emptiness. What they have found is the fundamental concept of the void. Now, 
I want to stop again to really help you think about this and connect this back to the symbol for the meeting place of spirit and matter and the cross of consciousness and manifestation. I believe that this void that scientists have found in the basic structure of the physical universe is the meeting point and mirror to the emotional and spiritual void that is plaguing the whole Western mind currently. And a fundamental rule about voids and vacuums is that they must be filled. Now, the only way I can conceive to fill a physically empty void in the basic structure of the fabric of the universe is to endow it with a quality of spirit or spirit of quality. Think about, too, the fact that particles and waves cannot scientifically be differentiated. Matter and energy are likewise indistinguishable. To me, this means that an object and its quality are inseparable. And this is, in fact, the meeting point of matter and spirit. And think about it, too. It seems inevitable that there would come a time where science would seemingly be able to go no further. Because science is confined and limited by only dealing with the physical. And it is at the limit of the physical that you will meet the spiritual. This place of meeting is in symbols. It has only ever been a matter of time before all science and all symbolism would cohere in the universe. And I believe this time has come. It's 2012. And I believe that the physical void that scientists have discovered is the symbolical void out of which our newly interpreted concept of the world will emerge. The world, as we know it, conceptually, is ending. This is a quantum philosophy, if you will. But it does not end there. This is only the beginning, because with this new perspective, we attain all sorts of implications. Because if what we are is spirit and ideas, then this means we are, in fact, immortal in this sense. That the forms in which we find ourselves now, at this moment in time, are simply mortal manifestations or expressions of eternal essences. This also means that fear lies only within the context of physical reality. There literally is in fact nothing to fear except the concept of fear itself, the feeling of fear. Knowledge is light. Light is love, and love is understanding. To come to this realization is to realize that the real is just as unreal as the unreal is real. If you perceive it, it is real. Realization is to make real. It is to alter your concept of what is real. A concept is what you believe it to be. What you believe is real, is real. True knowledge is simply a certain amount of confidence in, be in a belief. 
I truly believe we are all and everything is fundamentally this concept of spirit. In this way, <laughs> we are all one. We are all one. And at the same time, we are all and everything is a different, unique, special form of expression of the one, which must be respected in its own right, individually. We are together and separate. We are collective and individual. Think about the power of ideas and the part they play in the makeup of your world. We need to take care of ourselves for the sake of others by carefully watching and taking responsibility for our influence in this world that we all share. We are empathic beings, after all. <laughs> Follow your spirit. Be free. Be yourself. And let your spirit be your guide. Namaste.